Hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. So, after my last episode, which was Hayao Miyazaki's Princess Mononoke, now would be a good time to talk about an underrated movie that is truly wolf-related. Now, we all know that wolves are wild dogs that are known as the king of the forest. And to me, while I'm mainly a horse kind of guy, next to owls, wolves are really cool forest animals. But when it comes to films, wolves can be seen as villains like in Rock Dog, evil hunters like in Narnia, have a small role but still be threatening like in Into the Woods, parental figures like in The Jungle Book, comical characters like in Hoodwinked, heroes like in Balto, or as a cursed form like in The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. Now, while I still have plans to blog the first Alpha and Omega movie, if my friend Daniel is willing to help me, today I want to look at an animated wolf movie that was released last year and came all the way from Ireland. So, Released in Ireland on December 2nd, and to Apple TV Plus on December 11th, 2020, the movie is Wolf Walkers. So, let's get started. Taking place in 1650, during a time of superstition and magic, when wolves are seen as demonic and nature as an evil to be tamed, a young apprentice hunter named Robin Goodfellow comes to Kilkenny, Ireland with her father Bill, to wipe out the last pack in the neighboring woods by order of the stern and cruel Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell. While exploring the forbidden lands outside the city walls, Robin befriends a free-spirited girl named Mabe, a member of a mysterious tribe rumored to have the ability to turn into wolves by night whenever they sleep. As they search for Mabe's missing mother, Robin uncovers a very mysterious secret that draws her further into the enchanted world of the wolf walkers and transforms her into the very thing her father is tasked to destroy. So, what are my thoughts on the movie? Well, this film has got to be one of my absolute favorite animated films from last year, next to Over the Moon. But now, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, before I get started, I need to let everybody know that I didn't actually watch the movie on Apple TV since I don't have access to it yet. But thankfully, I did manage to watch it on Kim Cartoon instead. Anyway, the movie was animated by Ireland's Cartoon Saloon, best known for giving us such underrated hand-drawn animated movies like The Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea, and The Breadwinner. It was directed by Cartoon Saloon's co-founder, Tom Moore, along with art director and production designer, Ross Stewart. And the script was written by Will Collins. Apple acquired the movie on September 8, 2018. Also to note, Wolf Walkers is an original concept that was created by Moore and Stewart, and its animation uses a unique 2D style, alternating between a woodblock authentic and loose expressive line works. Also, while Wolf Walkers lost to Pixar's Soul during the 93rd Academy Awards, it won several awards including Satellite Award for Best Animated or Mixed Media Feature and five Annie Awards including Best Director for Moore and Stewart and Best Independent Animated Feature. Now, in my opinion, Cartoon Saloon's style of hand-drawn animation is very beautiful and breathtaking. Plus, it looks kind of reminiscent of the Middle Ages. Also, I love how everything is designed, drawn, and animated in this movie. Like the forest, the kingdom of Kilkenny, along with the character designs, the wolf vision, and the aura. Which I think is supposed to represent a wolf walker's soul. Speaking of which, I think the concept of a wolf walker is kind of similar to being a werewolf since you must be bitten by a wolf walker to become one. But instead of your body turning into a wolf, it's your soul that becomes a physical wolf while you sleep. Which seems kind of similar to the Avatar program, in a way. And in my eyes, 
I think being a wolf walker seems really cool. While I did portray as a wolf during junior high drama class, I know several people who would love to be a wolf, like my friend Bralia Ramirez, along with my goddaughter Elizabeth, and my former job coach Tara. I mean, wolf walkers have unique senses. They can see the energy of a living being. They can see, smell, hear, even feel things that humans can't. They can also see scents surrounding living creatures, and they can feel the vibrations in the earth in order to sense the movement of anyone or anything nearby. And they can also communicate with normal wolves, and they can heal injuries by touching or holding their hands over the wounded and share their energy with them. However, wolf walkers must be careful in their wolf forms, for any injuries they suffer will also appear on their human bodies as well. Plus, like in Nightmare on Elm Street, if a wolf walker dies in wolf form, their human body will die with them. Also, aside from being a wolf walker, there are also other parts of the movie that I like. For example, I like how the story is like a fantasy that's mixed with real history, kind of like Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth, and I think the friendship chemistry between the two main characters is both adorable and heartwarming. Plus, I like the scene where Mabe teaches Robin how to be a wolf, and I like the final climax where Robin leads the wolf pack to stop Lord Cromwell's soldiers from burning down the forest. Plus, I think the musical score by Bruno Colias is just so excellent to listen to, and I like a couple songs like Howl's the Wolf by Keela during the end credits, and Running with the Wolves performed by Aurora. Man, I haven't mentioned her since my blog of Frozen 2 two years ago. And now let's move on to the characters and the voice actors. Our main character, Robin Goodfellow, is voiced by Honor Neefse, best known from the Christmas Prince trilogy. To me, Robin is a bright and adventurous young girl who looks up to her father and wants to have adventures and hunt alongside him. But in truth, Robin desires to live free and be true to herself. Plus, I think Robin's wolf form looks absolutely beautiful and I think she makes a great leader while preventing the soldiers from reaching the den. Also, I think Robin's hawk, Merlin, is a very intelligent bird and he shares a very close bond with her. Robin's father, Bill, is voiced by Sean Bean, whom has been in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Jerry Bruckheimer's National Treasure, the first Percy Jackson movie, Mirror Mirror from 2012, and Pixels. To me, while Bill is a good man and a loving father, he is very overprotective of his daughter, and he's also skeptical of the supernatural not to mention stubborn. And his reason for being that way is because he's afraid of losing the only family that he has left. And he's also scared of what would become of Robin once he wasn't around anymore. But on the positive side, Bill is a skilled hunter and I thought it was really badass when Bill unleashed his wolf form and fought Lord Cromwell to protect his daughter. Our second main character is Maeve Ogmatire, voiced by Eva Whitaker. Now to me, Maeve is my favorite character in this movie, mainly due to her being wild and she's also proud to be a wolf walker. Plus, she's more agile than average in her human form. Also, as I said earlier, I think she and Robin have a great friendship dynamic and I also think she makes a great mentor for Robin while teaching her how to be a wolf after her first transformation. Also, I think Maeve's pack, while ordinary wolves, are loyal, intelligent, and friendly characters. Plus, they can be frisky, playful, and welcoming. But, when threatened or angered, they can be fierce, dangerous, and protective. Next is Maeve's mother, Maul, the leader of the wolf pack voiced by Irish singer and songwriter Maria Doyle Kennedy. Now, in my opinion, 
Maul is a wise, mysterious, kind, and compassionate character. Plus, she's a very caring mother. Also, I found the part where she healed a woodcutter named Sean very generous. Plus, Maul would do anything to keep her daughter safe, even if it means to never see her again. Also, while she's being held prisoner in her wolf form by Lord Cromwell, she asks Robin to convince Mabe to take the pack and leave the forest, showing that she puts the well-beings of her daughter and her pack before her own. Plus, I like that Maul is very forgiving, as shown when she forgave Bill for shooting her. Finally, we come to the main antagonist, Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell, voiced by Simon McBurney, best known from The Golden Compass, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and he voiced Creature in Harry Potter 7 Part 1. Now, this guy is pretty similar, but way different from the way history portrays him. Yes, he was an English general and statesman who led a parliamentary invasion of Ireland from 1649 to 1650. However, in this movie, Cromwell is an inflexible man virtually devoid of compassion, sympathy, understanding, and he is intolerant of anything or anyone that questions or threatens his authority. Plus, his religious and corrupt personality kind of makes him similar to Judge Claude Frollo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Plus, he believes that wolves are sinful animals, and he sees their abilities as witchcraft. However, his reason to exterminate the wolves is so that the woodcutters can continue their work uninterrupted. However, I hate Cromwell for keeping Maul caged up, forcing Robin to work as a scullery maid, and chaining her father, Bill, before his soldiers start to burn down the forest. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Wolf Walkers is an absolute masterpiece and an underdog of an animated movie. Plus, in my opinion, I think it's way better than Soul. The hand-drawn animation is not only underrated, but it's also beautiful and breathtaking. The story is very epic and thought-provoking. The main characters, Robin and Maeve, are very special and memorable characters. The other wolves are friendly and loyal supporting characters. Same goes for Robin's hawk, Merlin. And the villain, Lord Oliver Cromwell, is a cruel and corrupt character. Plus, the voice actors do a darn good job. If you folks have Apple TV, then you should definitely give this movie a watch. But for those who don't, well, I just hope it gets a DVD or Blu-ray release soon. That way, everybody can watch it. Especially since it could give you a nice breath of fresh air to watch something traditionally animated these days. You'll laugh, you'll cry, even howl with the light. And as for my rating, well, I'll give Wolf Walkers the highest rating of 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time. Mustang Power. <laughs>